Hey guys, it's me again, and today I'm going to show you the fastest way to farm intrinsics, as well as tell you why you may not want to do this. You can also modify this method to farm for the Pennant and the Quellar. Now this works the same way that the old Adaro focus farm worked, except instead of doing it in an exterminate mission, we're looking for a mission that always spawns a boss in Railjack. There are two nodes that do that. Flexa in the Veil, as well as the final mission on Saturn. So what you do is load up one of the two nodes solo, fly to the Galleon, and stealth kill everyone in the tile set, including the boss, then abort the mission. Trinsics are XP based, so most of the same rules apply to them, including keeping XP gained when aborting a mission. The same thing applies to Intrinsics, which makes this much faster and much easier than running random missions in the Veil or Saturn to get Intrinsics. Some things that will save you time here are pop an energy pizza during a loading screen so you don't have to do it in the mission. And the best way I've found to avoid detection with your Railjack is to fly really high up, then you fly towards the base. And for the most part, my Railjack hasn't gotten hit, but even if my Railjack did get hit, if you stack up on shield regen and armor, the fighters won't have the enough DPS to actually kill your Railjack. That's just a tip for you even if you do get spotted or if you don't have Zekdi Bulkhead or something like that. Also, don't launch this from the dojo, as sometimes you'll get a bug where you can't perform a finisher until you die, and obviously that's detrimental to our farm. So you're gonna want to go ahead and launch this from the orbiter instead. Something to note about the enemies in this farm, this is much easier than Adaro. As long as you do a finisher on their back, you always get a stealth affinity combo, regardless of what state they are in. Because of that alone, this farm only takes about 6 to 10 minutes, and that's including the time it takes uh, to get there with your Railjack. Now the things you'll need are Avara, a Smita Kavat, and a hammer of your choice. I chose the Ark of Titron. Now why a hammer, you ask? Well, DE killed off Covert Lethality in the melee update. Now, the weapons that deal the highest stealth finisher damage are hammers and rapiers with a 24 times multiplier. The reason we are using hammers over rapiers is because of the higher base damage, and base damage is pretty important for reasons I'll state later. So here's the build. My Avara is an efficiency and range focused build because I'm gonna keep my three up all the time, and I'm gonna cast my one a lot. I also have enemy radar, as well as positive power strength to keep my steel chance at 100% as stealing energy orbs from enemies helps with the energy economy. I also have prime flow to stay in prowl a lot longer and I'm using arcane energize and arcane trickery. Now you don't need these arcanes but arcane energize helps if you're stealing energy orbs from the enemy and think of arcane trickery not as an alternative to prowl but a speed boost. Now for the arc of titron I did a lot of testing and came to the conclusion that for a finisher build you don't want crit on your hammer because while yes finishers can crit it's inconsistent, so instead you want to load them up on damage and elemental mods as finisher damage scales with the weapon's total damage. This makes it super easy to build for, in fact you don't need forma, you don't need prime mods, you can even do it without a catalyst. In fact, this is the build I actually use for all my testing and gameplay. Because finisher damage scales with total damage, this also means that elemental combo doesn't matter as finisher damage is converted into true damage so that means it ignores all defenses so armor is not a problem. As far as bane mods go, smite grenier is nice but spoil strike is better than smite grenier but worse then Prime Smite Grenier. Now with that said, here's the best case build. I have Quickening here because it turns out that uh, Finisher Animations is capped at plus 50% attack speed. So why am I running Quickening over Prime Fury when Qu Quickening only has plus 40% attack speed? And the reason is the difference between the two mods is so negligible, that's not even worth the slot. Now if you don't have a Prime Bane, then you want to use Prime Fury and pair it with Spoil Strike in this slot. I also have more elemental damage in this build for a bug that happens sometimes when the Stealth Multiplier doesn't actually apply, even though I'm invisible and I've slept said enemy, uh, this will help out in most cases, but when that happens, the enemy remains unalerted for some reason, and when that happens, you get a free second finisher anyway, so it's not even a huge deal that I even have this extra damage, but it'll save me some time if it helps me out. My companion of choice is Smita for the energy and the affinity buff from Charm. Now, the only mines you need on Smita is... Charm in the first slot, as it takes first priority. Animal Instinct and Tech Enhance to increase the duration of Charm. And that's literally all you need. You don't need health mods because you're not going to get spotted. You don't want Smita getting kills. And you don't want any other precepts to take uh, priority away from Charm. Now here's the thing with Affinity Boosters. Now this goes for the Storebot Affinity Booster. This also applies to the Narmon Affinity Spike. Is that right now they don't work with Intrinsics. Or they don't make a difference by themselves. The only time they do work is when Smita's Affinity Buff uh, is procced. And then they kick in. Either that or Smita's Booster is the only one that works right now. But it's one of those two. And I've ran this farm a lot with and without a booster. And with Narmon's 
affinity spike, and my numbers stayed exactly the same. The only time I got a difference is was when Smita's affinity booster procced. So here's the numbers. So in the Veil, I got anywhere from 8 to 21 intrinsics. And that 21 is an outlier. I only got 20 plus intrinsics when 60 more enemies spawned, which didn't happen very often. Otherwise, I got between 8 and 12 intrinsics in the Veil with around 32 to 36 enemies spawned. When I get Smita's Affinity Booster proc'd, I get 31 to 40 intrinsics. The enemies in the Veil give anywhere from 9.8 to 10k affinity, and the Butchers gave me 3.3 to 3.5k. Saturn things get interesting as I get anywhere from 13 to 21 intrinsics with 52 to 54 enemies spawn, so it's way more consistent. And with Smita, I got 26 intrinsics. The enemies on Saturn gave me 9.5 to 9.6k affinity, and the Butchers gave me 3.1 to 3.2k, so I got slightly less XP, but Smita didn't help that much, but it was a more consistent experience. In the Veil, it was very inconsistent, as you get anywhere from 32 to 61 enemies spawned, but Smita helped a lot more. So for the most part, if you don't have a booster or you're trying to unlock the Veil, go to Saturn. If you do have a booster and Smita, go to the Veil. Now, should you do this outside of the Saturn roadblock? Probably not. All the must-have perks are at ranks 1 through 5, and since you don't have to finish the mission to do this and nothing here is a bug outside of the boosters, D could just ban everyone who does this. Now, if they don't, then they're probably going to do one of two things. Either make it so you don't get intrinsics uh, when you abort the mission, or they're going to incentivize players by granting bonus intrinsics when completing a mission, similar to how you get bonus XP for completion in the regular game. Even if they don't do any of those, there really isn't a reason you want to hit rank 10 anything. The rank 10 perks are all situational at best. For example, ramming speed doesn't work, reflex aim only works for half of a second, Anastasis costs double what a manual repair would, and either you or a teammate need to actually be in the ship, it's slower than a manual repair, and sometimes it just doesn't actually repair the ship. It just takes your resources and doesn't do anything. And according to the description of Join Warp, you can only use this from the ship. Now, if you don't like Railjack, the only perk worth getting is Rank 8 Tactical, uh, as that reduces the blink cooldown, and all Arcwing perks work outside of Railjack. So other than that, there's not a real rush to like level up your intrinsics very much. Anyways, now if you want an intrinsic farm where you actually finish the mission, go watch Gaz's video, but you'll actually need a good Railjack and battle avionics. But other than that, anyway guys, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.